Praise God for this blessed Sunday, December the 27th, 2020, the first Sunday after Christmas. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him.
your holy name. We come to give you praise and we come to give you honor. For God, you are worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord God, our King. Father God, you are awesome. Yes, Lord. And we continue to bless and lift up your holy name. We thank you, Father God, for another day that you allowed us to see. We thank you, Father God, for our health and our strength and for bringing us thus far through the year. Father God, we couldn't have made it without you. And we thank you, Father God, for your grace and for your mercy and kindness and goodness to us and for giving us of our sins. Yes. We thank you, God, for salvation. We thank you, God, for redemption. We thank you, Father, that you look beyond our hearts and you see that there was a need yes. to send your son, Jesus Christ. So on this day, Father God, we celebrate the birth of Christ. We celebrate him for the gift of life. Yes, God. We celebrate him, God, for yes. his death, burial, and his resurrection. Yes, and as he rose, we shall rise too. We rise, God, in claiming that you are Lord, our Lord, and King of kings. We thank you, Father God, that you alone would get our praise and that we would never give praise to anyone else besides for you. Father God, uh, praying for the sick and the shut in. Yes, Father God, those that lay on the bed of affliction, Please bring them comfort. We pray for the bereaved, for the, there has been many lost along the way. And so God, I pray that before any of us leave here, that we will confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we will believe that you raised him from the dead and we are saved. Father God, I ask you to help us to hold out and to keep our faith and our hope alive. As you shape and reshape our lives and our history, that we won't give up in knowing God that you know what's best for us and that you never left us, that you always been right here with us. And God, even though this pandemic is stricken all over the world, we pray, Father God, that you will send your anointing down on the bottles the battles of vaccine so that this vaccine will be for everyone. Father God, we're going to trust and we're going to believe. Lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways and not at you and ask you to direct our paths through here. Father God, we stand right here today grateful that we're able to once again come back into the house of the Lord. But God, you said that upon this rock, you should build your church, and the gates of hell should not prevail. Don't allow us to get distracted, God, about the things we see. We'll keep walking by faith and not by sight. Don't let us get distracted, Father God, that you said that for those who keep their mind on you, you will keep us in perfect peace. So, Father God, you are wonderful counsel. And you are the Prince of Peace. And God, we just want to give you the praise and the acknowledgement, not only this day, but for the rest of the days of our lives. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the prescription that we find in your word, that we will open up the gift and we will receive the blessing. Father God, I ask you to bless the past. Reverend June Dorsey, her family, the family members, the church members who are unable to be here. I ask you to bless those. Bless those, Father God, who are saying, pray for me. Hear the prayer. This is my prayer that I come and we stand in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May the grace and your peace rest and rule upon from this day forward, God be the glory in the name of the Father.
God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 This Sunday, after Christmas, the Christ candle represents the light that the Son brought into the world when he was born a little baby, God in the flesh. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. New Living Translation. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-control, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. From all that dwell below the skies let the Creator's praise arise. From all that dwells below
grace and your mercy in our lives. And we thank you for our families and our friends, God. Lord, we thank you that even through this year, Father, we have grown closer to you, Father. God, we thank you for listening to our prayers and answering our prayers, God. Lord, we will always give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. For our title, The Christ Child, Saving Grace. The Christ Child, Saving Grace. Titus 2 and 11, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. This is a gift for all humanity, the grace of God to every man, woman, and child. There are two types of grace, common grace and saving grace. Common grace is the favor that God gives to us Manifesting the way that the Lord allows the world to operate, provide sunshine, rain, shelter, food. Common grace is extended to every human being. Then we have saving grace. And saving grace is that favor from God expressed upon those whom He has chosen. And this expression of grace results in salvation. I am reminded in Ephesians 1 and 11, In Him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of Him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of His will. We the chosen have had the blessing of saving grace bestowed on us in abundance. Saving grace is based upon the love of God manifested in the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for our sins. You see, grace is not a commodity or a substance. Grace is an action of God. Therefore, it has a result. That is what is spoken of in Titus 2 and 11. The grace of God that has appeared in the manifestation the sacrifice of Christ, the resurrection, and the indwelling spirit. The indwelling grace that results in salvation also actively instructs you and I to turn from worldliness in this present age, the age that we are living in. The Greek word for grace is charis. It means undeserved favor, goodwill, loving kindness. Grace is a state of being for us and is action for God. We are under God's grace. He keeps us in this grace. We must come to understand that grace is God's action, holy, it's merciful, and it influences upon the souls of his people. The salvation is the result of his grace. We have been turned by the Almighty God to Jesus Christ. We are kept, we are strengthened, and we have our faith increased because of the grace of God. You see, God's grace works within you and I to develop our knowledge of Scripture and God's holy virtues. One may ask, how does grace guide us? We can look to our Lord and Savior for an example. Let us consider, for example, as we reflect on the humility of Christ as he washed the feet of his disciples in John chapter 13, 1 and 17. The word reads, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord and right and so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. 
I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Another example of how God's grace guides us. We can consider how Jesus forgave the prostitute who washed his feet with her tears in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 36 through 50. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. God also instructs us by the indwelling spirit. 1 John 2, verse 27 reads, As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. The Holy Spirit lives in you and convicts you of sin, reminding you of righteousness and enabling your fellowship with God. The Holy Spirit empowers you to be able to live godly lives. Ephesians 3 and 16 tells us, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. It is this saving grace that continues to work in you, to bring you to where God wants you to be. You and I need this instruction by grace to survive spiritually in this present evil age that we live in. The Bible speaks of two ages, this age and the age to come. Mark chapter 10, 29 through 31 speaks of this age. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brother or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me in the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This saving grace continually works in us to instruct us to turn to God's godliness. Godliness is more than Christian character. It covers the totality of the Christian life and provides the foundation upon which we are called to build our character on. Godliness is devotion to God and His will in our heart, in our mind, in our actions, and it is powered and generated by the Holy Spirit. Second Peter 1 and 3 tells us, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through knowledge of Him, who called us by His own glory and goodness. In this present age that we live in, this year has been like no other year. And we must stand firm as Christians. We must be godly people. 2 Timothy 3 and 5 reminds us, in the last days, the scripture says that people will have a form of godliness, but deny his power, have nothing to do with such people. We must align ourselves with those that walk in faith and trust in God. Godliness comes by the power of God through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And this by the saving grace of God that lives within you. 
Yes, God lives within you.
Jesus Christ loves you. And you have opportunity to change your heart to accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 tells us, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Yes, it's that easy to have a repentant heart. For the one that is thinking right now, how can God forgive me? You've taken the first step with a repentant heart. The Holy Spirit is there with you. You're ready to give your life over to God. And that urging, that pulling, you feeling inside yourself is God's Spirit calling you to Him. I ask that you pray with me this prayer of salvation. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've done wrong in my life. And I'm so sorry for the wrong that I've done. God, I don't want to be lost anymore. I don't want to do my life by myself. I know I need you. So Lord, I ask that you forgive me of all of my sins. You said, by I believe in my heart, that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that I would be saved. You said if I confess with my mouth, if I believe in my heart, I'm justified. So God, right now, I believe that you sent Jesus Christ to the cross, your son, for my sins. I'm so sorry for the wrong I have done. And I accept you, Lord Jesus, in my life as my Lord and Savior. Set me on the right path, Lord. Teach me your ways. Help me to get over the anger that I feel in my heart and in my mind. God, I ask that you would purify me right now. I ask that you would teach me, God, your ways. I ask that you will allow me and show me how to forgive others, God, that I have wronged and they have wronged me. Lord, cleanse my heart that I may come to know you and do good in this earth, Father, as one of your children. This is my prayer I ask in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. If you pray this prayer and you're sincere in your heart, you are saved. You are a child of God. This Christian walk will require you to pray, require you to come into a closer relationship with God. You have salvation. And now you need to learn how to draw near to God how to pray, how to read the scriptures. You need help developing your faith walk with God, to trust in God. And we're here for you. You need someone to pray with you. We ask that you call 502-417-4634 and we will offer prayer to you. We will offer up prayer to God. You may also Send a message through our church website, rapavenueamechurch.org. Send your prayer request to us, and we will pray for you. We will keep your information confidential. God loves you, and so do I. Go into this new year with a new meaning. Go into this year with Christ as your Lord and Savior. Stand victorious, body of Christ. You are not alone. God loves you. I love you. May God continue to bless you as you labor in this kingdom. 
Let us repeat the Apostles' Creed. What we believe in is the body of Christ. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen and amen.